Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we're going to start exploring at GitHub and get you signed up with a GitHub account and then back up our code to GitHub. So what is GitHub? I'm sure you've probably heard of it, if nothing else, from this course, but hopefully you've also heard of it in other places. GitHub is, let's look, well, let's just read their definition. GitHub is a development platform inspired by the way you work from open source to business. You can host and review code, manage projects, and build software alongside 50 million developers. GitHub is basically cloud storage for code that also allows you to easily share it with other people and to work together. Whether it's people that you know, people you don't know, you can all still work together on GitHub. So step one is to go ahead and sign up for GitHub. So we're going to click sign up. And then you have to create your account. Just go through the account setup process. They'll probably have a capture down here at the bottom and then create your account. I'm going to go ahead and jump into mine so that I can show you what it looks like from the other side. Once you get signed in, you should come to a dashboard that looks something like this. You obviously won't have um, all these repositories over here. You won't have the activity here and things like that. But um, it'll look something like this. But what you can do is you can create new repositories right here. This is what we're interested in. You can see over here on the left, you have all the other repositories that you have included. And it can be things that you wrote, things that other people wrote, so on and so forth. But what we're want interested in is this green new button. We're going to create a new repository. So on this field, create a new repository, owner, and then whatever your name is going to be. I highly suggest you name it the same thing that your application is. So in my case, that would be Yelp Comics. Notice that this has to be unique to your account, but it does not have to be unique in the entirety of GitHub. So like right here, I could call Express, and it works fine, even though somebody else already has an Express. Yelp Comics. You can give a description if you so desire. You can make it public or private depending on who you want to see it. Um, I'm going to make this private simply because I love y'all, but I also can't put all my code out there while this class is still in session in the real world, so I have to make it private. And then the next option is you can add a README if you so desire, you can add a GitIgnore if you so desire, and you can choose a license if you so desire. I'm not going to, but you can create a repository. It'll take a few seconds, and then it'll walk you through exactly what to do. We are right here. We have an existing repository. We're not creating a new one. We have an existing one. So all we have to do is just grab this, copy, or you can click this button over here, and then go into where our git is. So git status, make sure we're in the right place. Yep. And just paste that code. Go. It'll say, okay, what's your username? My username is Mr. Bastine. What's your password? And then it is uploading it, and there we go. It is done. It has uploaded and backed up my code to GitHub. So let's go back here to GitHub, and all you have to do now is refresh this page, and there it is. All of my code is now on GitHub. And you'll notice up here in the URL, it's just github.com slash username slash repo name. And that's really all there is to it. You created a um, GitHub account if you didn't already have one. You created a new repo, and you pushed your stuff to it. Notice here I, don't, I didn't cover this, but I'm going to show you this real quick. Git push origin master. That is what you will be using every time you make changes to push your changes to the cloud. Because right now, let's say I make a change. Let's go in here into my routes. Or let's go into the app.js and just put a space in there and save a couple things number one you'll now notice that i have these little things over here on the side showing me that there is a difference in this between this file and the one that is i'm tracking with git which is nice i'll go to git status and it'll show me hey this one's different so let's just add it git commit um added space git status now there's nothing to commit. If I close this and reopen it, you can see now those white lines are gone. Oftentimes they'll update in real time, but sometimes they don't. So I, I can tell that this is no longer different from that one. But this change is, has not been reflected in my GitHub. If I come in here to GitHub, even if I refresh the page and go to app.js, you'll see there's not a space between lines three and four. That's because I've committed here, but I have not pushed that to GitHub. To push it, you just do git push origin master. Now git push is the command, origin is kind of the place that it's going, and we added that, the name origin, let's find it right here, git remote add origin, so we named it origin, 
and it, we gave it the remote repository. So git remote at origin is where that name came from. And then master is the branch that we are pushing to. So right now, you can see that I'm on branch master. So if I go to Yelp Comics, you can see I'm on branch master. There's no other branches. But if you were working with branches, you would put the branch name there. So this is another command that you will memorize and you'll use over and over and over and over and over again. Git push origin master go. Username. Password. And there we go. Now if I refresh the page and I go to app.js, it has that space in it when it didn't previously. And the last thing I want to do is show you how you can stop Git from asking you for your password each and every single time you put it in. Now I will warn you, this is not good security on anything that you're going to use in the real world because your password is stored as plain text. There are more secure ways to do this, however, they involve a little bit more setup than I want to really get into, so or do this if or not, knowing in, in your heart of hearts that this is not good security practice. And if anybody, if you give anyone access to this machine, they are able to get your username and password from it if they know what they're doing. With that disclaimer in mind, here's how you can do it if you so choose. Get config credential.helper store. So you are going into the git config and you're setting credential helper to store your credentials. What that means is the next time you push, so let's just git push origin master, it's going to ask me for my username and my password. And it says everything is up to date, but the next time git push origin master, it does not ask me for my username and password because it has stored them in the credentials. Again, this is plain text, so I would recommend changing your GitHub password to something that is not a, a normal password you use before doing this. Keep that in mind. You use this at your own risk. You are welcome to do it if you want. If you're annoyed by having to put your username and password in every time, keep in mind it's not good security practice, especially if someone else is able to gain access to this machine. In this video, we created our very own GitHub account. After we created a GitHub, our GitHub account, we created a new repo for our Yelp clone. And then we pushed our um, local repository, our local repo, to GitHub. So now it is backed up on GitHub. We talked about using git push in order to um, push the code. Origin is the remote name, the name of, of the GitHub remote, and master is the name of the branch that we are pushing to. So whenever we make changes locally, we can push them all to the remote using git push origin master. That will back it up to GitHub. And you don't have to do this every time you commit. You can commit 10, 20, 30, 1,000 times and then do this, and it will kind of recursively go through and get all of them. This is just based on the way the git works because of the way it stores all of your previous commits. So you don't have to do the git push origin master every after every single commit. You just need to do it at some point. Generally speaking, I'll do it a few times a day, but that's entirely up to you. It depends on how often you need to push it. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks. Thanks.